Hey, hey, what do you know? Looks like we are live. I hope everyone is doing well. Looks like we have some people in here ready to learn some English. Just in case this is your first time, my name is Brent. This is Speak English with this guy. And the goal of this live stream today is to teach you all about music vocabulary we have in English. Before we get started, I'd like to say hello to a couple people. Cecilia from Argentina is in the chat. Mar Maria, she's also from Argentina. She's here. Alina, welcome. I think you might be from Russia, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the chat. English teachers here. Wait, another English teacher? Hey, and another thing. There are so many English teachers on YouTube. You know, Bob the Canadian, Speak English with Vanessa. They are great and if you are here watching me, that means so much. So thank you so much. Henry's here. Where's Henry from? Mm, Indonesia, I think maybe. Nope. He says it right there. China. He's from China. Welcome. Thomas, I hope you're doing well. Oh, Regis. I know Regis. He is a channel member. He's from France. What's going on? You know, France is in the house. Freddie Wolf, also channel member. He is here. And Yelena. Yelena is here. I think I think Yelena is from Ukraine. I believe so. I believe so. So welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hey, Sam the Taiwanese is here. What's going on? Fayez, welcome. Hey, before we get Audie the Thai, I got to say hi to Audie. What's going on, man? Audie, he is a gold member. We have been speaking on volley for the past week or so. He's buff. He's ripped. He's 66. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. English teacher's not an English teacher yet, but wants to be. All right. I think you can do it. Wait, Amin is here? I thought she wasn't going to be here. One of the first things I want to do is say thank you to Amina because, let me find it. Very generous. Very generous super chat yesterday. We weren't even um, going live, and she dropped a big super chat. So thank you so much. She was going to Toronto for shopping. So maybe maybe she thought the live stream was on Friday. So I think Bob the Canadian went live yesterday. If you don't know his channel, check it out. Hey, Mega's here. But I do have a little something for Amina for the very generous super chat she left oh thank you so much for the super chat yeah that's amazing thank you amina very generous thank you thank you so much and we do have a a movie question from a channel member in the discord server linda i'm not sure if she is here now but she is from italy and she was wondering about pitch perfect Last week, we did movies. This week, we're doing music. This is a movie about music. So it's the perfect question. She says, nice topic about music. Can I already ask a question? Pitch perfect. The movie means like absolutely perfect. Or is it something related also to music? Because pitch means something in music. Not sure what. Is it like a double meaning? A pun? Thanks. Yeah, Linda pretty much answered her own question. There are two meanings for pitch perfect. There, there are a lot of meanings for pitch, by the way, because you could throw a ball. But in this movie, pitch, you want to have good pitch when you're singing. It's a, it's a certain like high or low note the pitch of someone is singing, uh, someone singing, you want it to be perfect. So if it's perfect, they are a really good singer. In the United States, we have a show called American Idol. You might have a different singing show in your country called Italian Idol, maybe. But they often, the judges, they often talk about the pitch being a little off when someone is singing 
But if it's like exactly perfect, it might be pitch perfect. Like anything in life. Oh, yeah, that's pitch perfect. You don't hear it too often, but that's exactly what that movie about music is talking about. Pitch perfect. All right, so today... Hello. Today, we will be talking about at least 20, 25 English vocabulary words we use with music. And the first one I have for you is notes. Notes. Now, the notes in the picture are made up of old-fashioned keys. But if you are someone who knows how to play music you might use something like this to play your song. And we call those things notes. I'm not going to get into all the half notes, quarter notes, whole notes, but that's what we use there, eighth notes. So if you see that, we're talking about sheet music soon. If you see something like that, you can say those are notes or you might hear they are musical notes. I know you can write a little note to somebody, maybe somebody at work, hey, I left a note on your desk, but when we talk about music, those are also notes. And I also have some sentences here for you. You can practice shadowing. I think it helps to see words as they are being spoken so the subtitles are on. I think maybe like tomorrow they will be on. But until then, I have some sentences that I will read very clearly, very slowly, and hopefully that will help you even more with your English. Here's the sentence. In English, our musical notes are named for letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, etc., I think it goes all the way to, <coughs> excuse me, to G. I play the drums. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, there are no, uh, we'll talk, oh, we got to talk about so many things. But yeah, for me to play a song on the drums, I might use notes. They, they just have beats. We'll talk about that in a minute too. So many things we have to talk about. I haven't introduced them yet. Notes. And every so often, I am going to go into the chat to see if anyone has any questions. Right now, it just looks like people are saying hello to each other, which is amazing. And Ibrahim is here from Egypt. Oh, Freddie Wolf says, in France, we have the voice on television, which is a well-known song contest in our country. I think we have the voice too. Yeah. We have American Idol. We have the voice. We have Dancing with the Stars. That's another reality show. Not about music, but about dancing. Dancing. Hey, I'm Muse here. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Regis is wondering, do I play drums in a band? No. I put on my headphones or my AirPods, and I just play along with songs on my phone. I like to play the Rolling Stones. I like to play Nirvana. What else have I been playing? The Who, a song called Pictures of Lily by The Who, is a lot of fun to play. I've broken a few sticks. I got a bunch of sticks. <clears throat> Here are some drumsticks my brother gave me. Yeah, we call these drumsticks. Let me make this big. So we call these drumsticks. And I have broken quite a few drumsticks playing the song Pictures of Lily by The Who. But um, here's another. This is called the tip. The tip of the stick. And usually... If anything is going to break off, it's the tip. And I can't reach them, but there are many broken sticks on the floor behind me. No way. Back in the day, Fabio, that is a great term to use for something that happened 
a long time ago. Maybe for some of us that is high school, but yeah, back in the day, I used to play the saxophone. It's good. Ooh, you are asking the wrong person how to be a singer. Jeez, I don't know. Nobody, nobody wants me to uh, tell you how to sing. That's for sure. Hey, the next one is melody. Melody. Now, this is the opposite of the beat, which we are going to talk about in a second. But when you see notes played higher and lower notes, we might call that the melody. And you know, the great thing about a melody is you can hum that song like this. That is humming. Or you could whistle the melody. Something like that. It's very hard to whistle into this microphone. That is the melody, though. And I have a sentence for you. A melody is made up of musical notes. Let me read that correctly. A melody is made up of many musical notes. Lots of M's in that sentence. So if you have a lot of musical notes and you put them together, you probably are going to have the melody. The melody. That's the, the pretty part of the song. The other part, which if you're a drummer or you like the drums, you might like this even better. It is the beat. And a lot of times, the beat of a song you could clap to the beat of the song. Poetry also has beats. I know Cecilia likes poetry. Poetry has a certain beat or a certain rhythm. A rhythm is a little more complicated beat. The beat might be like this, but a rhythm might be something you play on the drums. It might have a couple beats with that rhythm. You might, you might kind of dance along to the beat. That's my bad dancing right there. I'm not going to put that on the full screen for my dancing. I'll put it on the really small screen. Look at this here. I'll dance on the small screen though, not the big screen. The beat of a song is usually made with the drums, the beat. You can see these people playing the drums. Now, the woman on the left is playing a drum set. And it looks like the man on the right is playing a bongo. We might call that drum a bongo. Yeah. And she is left-handed, unless that picture is backwards. She is a left-handed drummer. All right, any questions? Oh, a few, few things going on in the chat. Michael Jackson song. It's got beat it. Remember that? Just beat it. That has a good rhythm too, by the way. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do my Michael Jackson impersonation here. It's a little early in the morning, but hee hee. Did that sound exactly like Michael Jackson? Hee hee. Did I just wake up a dog in your room with that high voice? Michael Jackson. Nowadays, that's the opposite of back in my day. Back in the day, older people might say that. Back in my day, we used to listen to good music. Nowadays, I can't whistle. Oh, because I've lost some teeth. Do you need teeth to whistle? Maybe you do. I thought I just used my tongue and my lips, but I bet teeth are so important. Teeth are so important. And they're expensive too, by the way. I have a dentist appointment Monday. That's fun. Maybe um, next week we can do a, we can do a um, lesson on the dentist. Nobody wants that, right? Nobody wants a lesson on the dentist. All right, the next one here, bass. So it's usually the bass and the drums that make up the rhythm. The bass and the drums 
usually make up the rhythm of a song. And when we talk about bass, we are talking about the low notes, the low notes. And if you look and see the way those people are playing that instrument, they are playing the bass. It's a type of guitar that takes care of the low notes, the low notes. I think I have a little something here for you. When people talk about bass, they are usually talking about the low notes. When people talk about bass, they are usually talking about low notes. The picture shows two bass guitars. The picture shows two bass guitars. Now, most bass guitars have four strings. Those two bass guitars have five strings. We would call that a five string bass. So if you just hear bass guitar, it probably has four strings. But there are some five string basses. There are some six stringed basses. Bass. Bass and drums of any band, we would call that the rhythm section. The rhythm section. And in English, the opposite of bass, we might call that treble. Treble. It's a little bit, it takes care of the high notes. Treble. Hopefully that helps. The next one. Hum a tune. You might hum a tune. And it might go something like this. Wait. I will try to hum Michael Jackson's Beat It. <laughs> Something like that. That would be humming Michael Jackson's Beat It. I hope YouTube doesn't get mad that I just did that. Yeah, beat it. I know that's, I'm so old. I do know that song. It's a good one. Uh, now, I think the next one. Yeah. Now I have that song stuck in my head. That's what we call it in English. When you can't get a song out of your head, it is in your head playing for the whole day. I actually did a lesson on what happens when a song gets stuck in your head and there is a link down there in the description. That's right. Erroni. MJ, right? <laughs> you lost three years of your life? Well, let's make it six. Hee <laughs> hee. That, that's, a, that's a good impression. If you replay that, if you go back in time, play that again, with your eyes closed, you might think, whoa, is Michael Jackson a guest on Brent's live stream? <laughs> it's a good thing that I can't move around because I would show you my moonwalk. No, no, we don't, we don't want to do that. Nailed it. That's what I'm talking about, Ibrahim. Thank you for the encouragement. That's what I like to hear. Instead of taking years off your life, I like to hear encouragement. Michael Jackson nailed it. If you nail something in English, it means you got it exactly perfect. Perfect. Just like pitch perfect we talked about. Whoa, a lot of people are leaving the live stream right now. We did have 60 people. Now it's down to 40. Oof, my Michael Jackson impersonation. Nah, I'm just kidding. We didn't have 60. Natalia. Hello, guys. Hello, Mr. Brent. Sorry for being a bit late Saturday. I know. Don't worry. All you missed was my Michael Jackson impersonation. Erroni thinks it was good. No, he doesn't. He doesn't like it, but Ibrahim does. Apple the Frog. Welcome, my friend. Hope you're doing well. So what song have you gotten 
stuck in your head lately. Maria earlier left a comment about the Spice Girls. The Spice Girls have so many songs that can get stuck in your head, right? I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. That, that. That will be stuck in your head all day. And you might find yourself humming that tune all day. Tune is another way we call song in English. Tune, song, same thing. Same thing. Oh, Audi, do you? Karaoke, that is not one of my words today. But karaoke is when there is music playing, but there's no singing. So that means somebody from the audience has to grab a microphone and start singing. Usually, the lyrics of that song are written on a screen. The lyrics of a song, I think we're going to do lyrics later, but the lyrics of a song are the words, are the words of a song. So when you're humming a tune, you're not saying the lyrics. You're just humming the melody. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Oh, <clears throat> a long time ago for members, I did play the drums, but uh, maybe I'll do that on the channel at some point. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, it seems like I always have Wannabe stuck in my head, Maria. Yeah, it's a good song. It's catchy. It's an earworm. It's an earworm. All right, the next one, sheet music. Careful how you say that. Sheet music. That is, let me pull this up, make it a little bigger. You see that man? He is playing a piano. But what he is doing is he is reading sheet music. He is sh reading sheet music. On that sheet of paper, there are musical notes. And here's a sentence I have for you. The piano player is using sheet music to play the song. He can read music. If you're talking about reading music, that means they can look at the musical notes and know how to play them. I'm wondering, anybody in the live chat, can you read music? So I know we have some people in here who used to play musical instruments. Can you? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is Eminem rapping about? And lose yourself? In just a few words. Man, it has been a long time. I need to take a drink of water for that one. Lose yourself in the moment, right? I almost think, and I don't, I'm not an um, expert on Eminem. I did like some of his music back in the day. But I think Lose Yourself comes from a movie, doesn't it? Six Mile, Eight Mile, something like that. And I think he's rapping about like being inspired, never giving up. It's Lose Yourself in the Moment, right? Something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I have been asked that... Um, do native English speakers know what Eminem is rapping about? So a lot of times Eminem is just way too fast for most native English speakers to understand what he is saying the first time. It usually takes a few times of listening to an Eminem song to realize what he is saying. So, oh, Freddie Wolf can neither sing, play, nor read music at all. Oh, that's too bad. There's always a chance you could learn. But if you're learning English, like I know you all are, probably what has happened is all of your other hobbies have been put to the side. You're not doing them right now. And you're focusing on English. I find that with doing YouTube, 
making lessons for you on YouTube. My Italian, I haven't been able to study my Italian as much. So sometimes in your life, you have to pick and choose. Am I going to do two or three hobbies? Or am I just going to do one really well? And I bet most of you in here have decided to make learning English your main hobby. Oh, Stacy can read music. That is impressive. Piano. Very hard lesson. Very hard lesson. Okay, <clears throat> Henry, teach me how to at somebody. You see that on the screen? That's what we say. Now, if you are on a mobile device, you can't at somebody, which is too bad. You have to be on a desktop. You have to be on a computer. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergy season. Allergy season. Panama. Emilio, Latin America is well represented. Just a couple weeks ago, I have a new student in my class, and he is from Honduras, also Latin America, Latin America. All right, let's do some more here. Let's do some more. Wait, what? I, I had to choose. I had to know. So last night, right before bed, I did a lot of listening in Italian. I watch another YouTube channel called The Pillow. It's an Italian channel. YouTube channel, The Pillow. So it's, I listen a lot when I can for my Italian, but yeah, YouTube has kind of taken center stage. So when something becomes more important in your life, you can say it has taken center stage. So for most of you, when it comes to hobbies, learning English has probably taken center stage. So in music, if somebody takes center stage, they're really important. They take the center of the stage. All right, let's move on. What else do we have here? Sheet music. We also have composer. Composer. And I have a sentence for you. A composer is someone who writes a song. You might also hear the term songwriter. So composer is a little more formal, but that is the person who wrote the song. So if you look at your favorite song, you might say, oh, who's the composer of Beat It? Who's the songwriter of Beat It? Probably Michael Jackson, right? Maybe. A lot of times the artist the artist is the person who performs the song. A lot of times the artist is the songwriter, but sometimes they have someone else write the song for them. Any questions on that? Composer, composer, or songwriter. Elena can play the guitar. Well, maybe we should, uh, we should start a band. I'll play the drums. You can play guitar. Cecilia can sing. We'll have a trio. We'll get the trio in a minute. Um, let's see. Natalia. Author can be a composer. Mm. Or is it for a uh, writing category? Yeah, I would say an author would be someone who writes books. Last week, if you saw the live stream... I think we talked about screenwriter. That is someone who writes movies, a screenwriter. And a composer, if you just say composer, like he is a composer, they would think music first in English. Yeah. Hope that helps. <clears throat> no, Apple the Frog, good question. Is there a difference between the words composer and songwriter? No, no. Just one is a little more formal, but both can be used. Like with Beat It, it's a pop song. That's what we call Beat It, a pop song. It's a popular song. You might hear it on the radio. I think you could use songwriter or composer for that. But if you know what an orchestra is, or if you know like 
Bach, Beethoven, they are a little more formal. We only call them composers. I don't think you would call Mozart a songwriter. You would probably call that person a composer. Composer. All right. Yeah, you could compose a beat. Yep, you could compose a beat. Wait, Center Stage is a movie too? Hmm. I've never heard it. Yeah. So um, right now, as an English teacher, I'm going to take Center Stage. Look at that. Take, Hang on. Take everything away. Hang on. Hang, hang on. Hang on. Okay. Oh, there's a banner there too. Hang on. I've now taken Center Stage. There is nothing else on the screen to distract you. I've taken Center Stage. So again... When something is more important than anything else, you might say it is taken center stage. So hopefully, if you've ever had children in your life, when they are really young, those children take center stage in your life. Center stage. Hope that helps. What do we have next? Duo. So these next two go together. Duo. And trio. Duo and trio. So if there is a band composed of two members, did you hear? I used composed again. Sometimes you can use composed like the phrasal verb, phrasal verb made up. So a group of two people is called a duo. If a group is composed of two people, we call it a duo. If a group is made up of two people, we call it a duo. And you can see here, there are actually three pictures of duos. We have two people singing at a microphone. They would be a duo. We have one person in kind of a red dress. She is playing a violin. That violin has strings. And you see that long stick thing she's using to play the violin with? We call that a bow. So she is sliding the bow along the strings of that violin. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in the back, you can see that person is playing a guitar. So the long stick in the middle picture is a bow. And then on the right, we have two gentlemen. They are playing horns. They're playing horns. The person that is playing the long one, that's a saxophone. And the person that's playing the shorter one, that is a trumpet. And both of those men are wearing suspenders. Yeah. Suspenders are those things on their shoulders that are holding up their pants. That's what we call them, suspenders. I hope that helps. That's a lot of vocabulary there for you. If it's too much, you may want to go back and uh, rewind. But we, talk, we talked about suspenders, trumpet, saxophone, bow microphone you probably knew microphone right the next one is trio and if you look at those pictures look at that a group of three people playing music is a trio group of three people playing music is a trio A duo is a group of two people who perform music. They perform as a duet. A trio is a group of three people who play music together. Duo. Yeah, and if two people are singing, we could call that a duet. When they actually perform they might perform as a duet. If a song needs two people to sing, we would call it a duet. 
Natalia, I'm glad you're here. So I don't have slides for a group of four people, but we would call that a quartet. Guess what a quintet is? Quintet? Group of five. Group of five people. So quartet and quintet. How's that for pronunciation? <clears throat> Look at that. Yeah, a duo. A duo is a group of two people. And when they get on stage and perform, you could call that a duet. So if a song requires two people to sing, that song would be called a duet. No, Trio Rio. New York, Rio, Tokyo? No, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. All right. So um, in the United States, some famous duets we have or famous duos um, Simon and Garfunkel, and I might be dating myself because that is an old band. I did a video on dating myself. No, it does not mean I take myself to dinner. So um, Simon and Garfunkel, um, if you like country music, think of the American South like Nashville country music. There is a duo called Big and Rich. There's another duo called Hall and Oates. They they don't they're not country. They're pop. Hall and Oates. What are they? Man Eater, I think. If you know that song, Man Eater. She's a man eater. Do, 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 do. That's Hall and Oates. Definitely American. So you might have never heard of them. But how about this band from the 80s? Who was a trio? I believe aha. Norwegian. I had a, uh, a comment this week from someone in Norway. I'm like, aha, big international band who is a trio. You know who my favorite trio is? Probably Green Day. If you have ever heard of Green Day, an American band, Green Day trio. I would love to hear. What's that? Quartet is four. Right. Quintet is five. Quartet. So there have been some very famous quartets in rock music. That is probably the most popular number. Quartet, the Beatles. A quintet, the Rolling Stones. We'll talk more about the Rolling Stones later. But... um. Aerosmith, another American band. They are a quintet. They have five people. Um, Van Halen, one of my favorite groups. They have four people. They're a quartet. Guns N' Roses, they are a quintet. At least when they were most popular, they were a quintet. No, I don't think so. Is there another word that means the same as trio? We talk about trio when we talk about music, but if there are three babies born at the same time, we would call them triplets. If they, if they, if they are born on the same day from the same mother, they are triplets, but we don't say duo for little babies. We say twins. We say twins. Look at that, Alex. Alex, you must be, you must have good taste in music. Green Day t shirt and sweater. Love it. What's your favorite Green Day song? I like Wake Me Up When September Ends. So many good songs from them. Basket Case. Basket Case. <clears throat> Paul McCartney, Michael Jackson. They, they did do so, they did do a duo at one time. They were they they performed duet for was it one song? Yeah, I remember the say 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 song. And then they had a falling out. So if two people get along really well and then they don't, 
We call that a falling out. Michael Jackson bought all of the Beatles music. And so then Paul McCartney didn't like Michael Jackson anymore. They had a falling out. The Carpenters. Whoa. Yeah, Karen Carpenter. I believe she was a drummer, right? And she played with her brother, I believe. The Carpenters. Nicely done. 21 Guns. That is a good song. 21 Guns. Uh, good question, Freddie. What's the difference between a group and a band? I would say very little. Like if I said to you, who is your favorite group? Oh, my favorite group is Green Day. Who's your favorite band? My favorite band is Green Day. So most of the time, I think those two words can be used together. Now, if you have like, man, we even say a boy band though. So NSYNC, Justin Timberlake, NSYNC, they were a quintet. You could call them a group or a band. We use those two pretty much interchangeably. Ebony and Ivory. So did, did Michael Jackson do that one with Paul McCartney? Or was that Stevie Wonder? I can't remember. Oasis. Yeah, they did separate. Yeah, the two brothers don't get along. The Gallagher brothers don't get along. But Oasis was a quintet. They had five members. The Bee Gees. They were a trio of brothers. Nicely done. And then they had another brother, Andy, right? He had a solo career. So I don't have this as a slide, but if it's just one artist, you might hear solo. So Michael Jackson was once part of a group. He was part of the Jackson Five. They were a quintet, five brothers, and then he went solo. If somebody goes out on their own, we could call them a solo artist. So at one time, Justin Timberlake was part of NSYNC, and then he went out on his own. He became a solo act. Hope that helps. Solo. Hey, Freddie Mercury's coming up. Freddie Mercury has to be mentioned. Queen, they were a quartet. And who is it? Roger Taylor on drums, Brian May on guitar, Freddie Mercury, lead vocals, and the bassist. Somebody who plays bass, we would call them a bassist. The bassist was John Deacon. He wrote um, one of their biggest hits, Another One Bites the Dust. Do, 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 do. Do -doom 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 -doom. That is a that's a bass line. So with more music, we could say that's a bass line. When you just hear the bass playing a melody, call that a bass line. Yeah, soloist plays a solo part. So if if there is a bunch of people playing, if there is a group of people playing, and then in the middle of the song, just the guitar plays. We would call that a guitar solo. If just the drums play, we would call that a drum solo. In the middle, you could have a bass solo. One word I almost put on here, but I didn't, is acapella. Acapella. <clears throat> when you hear acapella, comes from the, the Italian, by the way, a lot of uh, music vocabulary comes from italian we use a lot of that when you're reading sheet music some of the directions on the sheet music are in, 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 in italian like crescendo we won't go all into that but a cappella it means only people singing no instruments if you want to do it a cappella oh yeah Arone says uh solo is a is an Italian word. All right. Just looking through here, making sure the show must go on. Queen. Good one. Good one. 
And um, we do have that saying in English, the show must go on. It means you need to continue with life. Now, let's say in a show, um, oh, I was watching Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters with David Grohl. During a concert, he broke his leg. But guess what? He kept on playing. They put him in a chair and he finished the show. So in that case, the show must go on. You can't stop it. But we also use it for daily life. So let's say you wake up in the morning. You're not feeling great. You're not feeling very good. But you have something very important to do at work. You might say, oh, show must go on. And then you go to work even though you aren't feeling great. Okay, the show must go on. It means life has to continue. Show must go on. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I say Italian, um, it does originally come from Latin. But acapella gospel band all right let's talk about gospel band if you ever hear gospel band in english think religion so if a band is gospel it has something to do with religion they sing a lot about religion all right yep life goes on same thing show must go on life goes on girl power what is that for girl power is it Spice Girls? I don't know. Spice Girls. Um, what is it? Little Big Town. You might not know Little Big Town, but they have a very powerful um, female singer. What's her name? Je Jennifer Nettles. Whew. She's good. She's good. Madonna. Alicia Keys. Great solo artists. Great solo artists. Man, Alicia Keys and her piano. Those little white and black things on a piano, we actually call them keys. So, And she plays a great piano. Cowtown. Never heard of them. Never heard of Cowtown. What's the next one? We got streaming service. So this is becoming more popular now. Your streaming services. I think I see a little bit of YouTube streaming there and some Amazon streaming and iTunes and Spotify. There are so many streaming services now. So I'm wondering, what's your favorite streaming service? What do you have a subscription to? Do you have a monthly subscription to any of those streaming services? If you have a monthly subscription, that means you pay a little bit each month to listen to music whenever you want. So instead, we're going to talk about going to talk about albums later. So most people do not go to the store and buy CDs anymore. If you grew up in the 90s like I did, we went to the store and bought CDs. Now as long as you have an internet connection and you pay 10 American dollars a month, you can probably listen to any song, anytime, anywhere, as long as you have internet streaming service. At this point, I have Amazon Music because I pay for Amazon Prime shipping. If you have Amazon in your country, you might know this. I pay a little extra for Amazon Music. But my brother has had YouTube Music forever. And he says it's great. So maybe I have to switch over to YouTube. Switch over. Switch over. So if you're using one streaming service, but maybe there's a better deal for another one, you could switch over to that. Switch over. We also use the same verb 
for movies. You can stream movies. Same thing. You got an internet connection. You can stream movies. We also, excuse me. We also use the same verb for movies. You can stream movies too. So anybody put in the comments, CDs and cassettes. That's old school, the cassettes. I do not have, because it's so old, I don't have cassettes as a as a term, but just so we know what a cassette is, <laughs> we're dating ourselves here. We're dating ourselves here if we're talking cassettes. At least, at least we're not talking eight tracks. Maybe I'll pull up an eight track here in a minute. Jeez, that is old. But here, this is what a cassette looks like. In English, that might be from the French, isn't it? That's a cassette or a cassette tape. Back in the early, early 90s, 80s, 70s. Before that, we had records. Can I pull up? What's an 8-track? This... um. You would have to be older than I am to use an eight track. Let's see. But those are eight tracks. They're like really big cassettes. And I think my parents used those at one time. I was too young to ever use an eight track. But um, a track is also what we call a song. You could say, track we usually use it when you're playing an album or a cd or an eight track it's like oh what what's that back in the day hey what number is um beat it oh that's track number one so if it's track number one it's the first one on an album but because we just stream everything now the number of the track isn't as important so I don't have that as one of our words, track. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. The next one, blasting. Blasting. If a song is really good, you might make it really loud. That is called blasting it. And here is the sentence I have. That song was so good. I had to blast it in my car, blast it. So when you blast something, oh, that was right here. We use this phrasal verb quite a bit. To make it louder, we say turn up. And then if you want to make it lower or not as loud, you might turn it down. And that that looks like an old school radio right there. That looks like an old school radio. You might hear somebody say, can you turn down the music? I'm trying to sleep. Can you turn down the music? I'm trying to sleep. Blasting. You can see that person there. The speakers, that's what we call those orange things. The speakers where the music comes out. It looks like uh, it is pretty loud. So we might say the music is blasting. The music is blasting. That song was so good, I had to blast it in my car. The next one, if you really like a song, you can say, that's my jam. That's my jam right there. Beat it. That's my jam. Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's my jam. When you hear a song you really like, you can say, that's my jam. Now, if you are younger than I am, like if you're Apple the Frog, I think Apple is a teenager. Teenagers don't say, that's my jam. Older people like me, we do say it all the time. Oh, that's my jam. That's my jam. Turn it up. Blast that. That's my jam. Something is really good. You can see this person might be jamming out. 
I don't have that phrasal verb on a slide, but if you're jamming out to a song, you might bob your head like this. It's like, oh yeah, it's good. It's my jam. You're jamming out to that song. Jamming out. The next one. And you. This could be where you see a band perform. You could call it a venue. Is it a big venue? It is, is it a small venue? Is it a medium-sized venue? Venue. I'm going to see my favorite band at the venue down the street. So the place where a band plays, call that the venue. The venue. I believe that is French, by the way. What's that manual? Oh, no way. Loud music? You have to pay a fine if you get caught? <laughs> Pump up the volume. Right. Now, teenagers, they don't say that. So if you're a teenager and you're trying to sound native in English, you might not want to say that. But if, in your, if you're in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s or your 60s, pump up the volume. Turn it up. That comes from, I think, an 80s movie. Pump up the volume. I could be right. Back in my time. Back in my day. Back in my day. Lose yourself in the moment you own it. Oh, you better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. The opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. Yeah, so that's um, some lyrics from Lose Yourself, Eminem. So yeah, it does seem inspiring. It seems like, you know, don't carpe diem. That's a Latin term we have. Seize the day. Don't waste your life. Carpe diem. Yeah, that venue, it could be at a theater could be at a theater uh i, I don't want to an arena yes if a band is really big you might go to an arena and you might say well what's an arena an arena would be where a basketball team plays tonight i am actually going to an arena and i think i am going to make a video an English lesson from an arena. It's in Boston. It's called TD Garden. TD is a bank we have in the United States. So yeah, an arena. And I'm going to see a hockey game there tonight. But I have seen my favorite band play there. Dave Matthews Band. The Beatles are probably my all-time favorite band, but you know they don't perform anymore. Oh, gosh. I see Natalia is saying, oh, okay. Whew. We should do an English karaoke with all of your subscribers. Okay. I thought you said I should do English karaoke. I would lose subscribers. They're like, who is this guy? Why is he singing? Unsubscribe. Click. Please don't unsubscribe. Please don't unsubscribe. Hey, it looks like... um. Apple the Frog's grandmother's birthday is soon. Happy birthday, Apple the Frog's grandmother. Oh, arena. Arena comes from Latin. Oh, gladiators. Hey, speaking of movies, last week, Gladiator was a great movie. The next one I have for you is Tour. Tour. So my favorite bands are going on tour. This summer, in the United States, a lot of bands go on tour in the summer. The big ones do because they can play big venues that are outside. We call those amphitheaters. Amphitheaters. If something is really big, amphitheater. And I have a sentence for you. Last summer... I was able to catch my favorite band at a really, really small venue. Let me read that correctly. Last summer, I was able to catch my favorite band 
at a really small venue. So when a band goes to different venues on different dates, call that a tour. Call that a tour. A tour is many shows in a row. They might take some days off, but summer tour is popular. I am anxiously awaiting for the band to release their summer tour date. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry to cough right in there. Um, summer tour dates. I'm anxiously waiting for the band to release their summer tour dates. In February and March, a lot of the big bands in the United States will release the dates for their summer tour. And the date, you can find that on the calendar. Oh, when is the band playing at this venue? Oh, the date is April 12th. April 12th. That's a hard one to say, right? 12th. Um, I'm going to be doing a pronunciation video this week. I hope to have it out on Wednesday, 12th. That might be one of the ones, 12th. Album, single. What the heck? What's the difference? So an album is what a band puts out. English phrasal verb. An album is what a band puts out full of their music. An album usually has 8 to 12 songs. So Green Day, one of my favorite bands, they put in an album called Dookie. They put an, out an album called Dookie. Now a single, exactly what it sounds like. It's a single song with streaming services bands don't put out singles that much but a single is often played on the radio that could be the most popular song from the album we would call that a single so bohemian rhapsody is a single off the album I think it's called The Day at the Races. It's a great album by Queen if you've never heard it. It's a good album. Speaking of Queen, the next one is Frontman. Frontman. You can see I have a picture of Bono, Mick Jagger. So we have U2 there and we have the Rolling Stones. Frontman. What is a frontman? Well, a frontman is usually the lead vocalist of the band. It's usually the person who takes center stage. Frontman. So my question to you, and frontman does not have to be a man. It could be a woman. Spice Girls. We've talked about them quite a bit. I don't think they have a front man. They are an ensemble. Whew, lots of terms. If a band is an ensemble, they don't have a front man. They don't have one person that takes all the attention, that takes center stage. Although Sporty Spice is my favorite Spice Girl. Feel free in the comments if you want to say your favorite Spice Girl. Do you like Sporty Spice? Do you like Baby Spice? Do you like Ginger Spice? There is Scary Spice. No, no. My favorite is Scary Spice. My favorite Scary Spice. I got mix, mixed up. And then Posh, right? Posh Spice. So who's your favorite Spice Girl? But this is a question I asked somebody I teach with yesterday. Who is the best front man of all time? Is it Mick Jagger? Is it Bono? Is it Kurt Cobain from Nirvana? Is it Freddie Mercury from Queen? I will tell you my favorite front man in just a second. But that that's a good question, I think. Who is the best front man of all time? If you're talking the Beatles, they really don't have a front man. 
You had Paul McCartney. You had John Lennon. They might be two of the most popular, but Ringo, he had a lot of fans. He's behind with the drums. So drummers are not usually front men of groups. Not usually. A couple times I can name some bands that had a drummer as a front man. The Eagles, pretty famous American band. The guy that played drums was Don Henley. He's not really a front man, though. He was sometimes the lead vocalist, though. So the lead vocalist is the person who sings the most. In the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger is the lead vocalist. Sometimes you have Keith Richards. He plays guitar. He sings backing vocals. Backing vocals, those are the other singing parts that aren't the lead. Brian May for Queen sang really good backing vocals. So Natalia says Mick Jagger, definitely. Oh, Chester Bennington. Who does he play in? Is it Tool? Chester Bennington. Okay, Mick Jagger. Yawen, how you doing? Taiwan is in the house. Axel Rose, man. Back in his prime. Back in his prime. If we say prime about someone, that means when they were at their best. Their prime, when they were at their best. When Axel Rose was in his prime, he's right up there. But he didn't last that long. He didn't last. Oh, Elton John, piano man. Elton John's good, man. Good. Favorite Spice Girl is Mel C. I think my favorite Spice Girl is Mel B. Who's Mel C? Is that Sporty? Sporty Spice. Can't remember. I think I like Mel B the best. All right. I think my favorite. My favorite front man. Oh, Ginger Spice. Ginger. Ensemble comes from French. So many things in the chat I'm looking at here. Okay, so on June 1st, 2022, Rolling Stones will have a performance in Madrid. No way. You got to go see them. The next one will be in 2030? Come on. Mick Jagger's going to be like 100. No, how? I think he's almost 80 right now. So, But I guess his dad, Mick Jagger's dad, lived until he was 100 or something. Mick Jagger will be around forever. And then Keith Richards will be around even longer. Ah, Eminem, the best front man. Hard to argue with that. When he is on stage... He owns the stage. You might hear that too. When someone is a front man and they're doing really well and the audience is watching their every move, you might hear that. They own the stage. Oh, thank you. Okay. Chester Bennington is a member of Lincoln Park. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, a band I'm not too familiar with. But Jimi Hendrix, hard to argue, hard to argue. I say that all the time. If I agree with them, you know, you can't, if you are, if you're making an argument, you'll say, well, he wasn't that good, blah, 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 that. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, best guitar player ever, maybe for a guitar player. You can say guitarist. He's the best guitar player of all time. Or Jimi Hendrix is the best guitarist of all time. Yeah. Okay. Being together. So an ensemble. Spice Girls. Definitely an ensemble. No front man there or front woman. They all play a big part. With TV shows, if you are 
um, familiar with friends, we would call them an ensemble cast. Friends. There is no one star. Monica, she's part of the ensemble. Joey, there, there's five people there. I don't know if we would say quintet. That's usually for music. But Friends is an ensemble cast. Last week we did cast with movies. If you remember that. Frontman. I don't know. I don't know if we have the best frontman. Emma. Emma. Is that Baby Spice? Emma was the beauty of the group. Even Victoria, though. That's posh, right? Posh Spice. But a cliche. Who doesn't like Victoria? I like Mel B. Is it Mel B? Sporty Spice. I'm a fan of Mel B. All right, Apple. Is there another word that means the same as front man? A lot of times, a lot of times you'll hear lead singer, lead singer, or lead vocalist. Yeah. Front man, front man. All right, the next one. Pause. That button you probably have on your phone when you're streaming music. We call that button the pause button. The pause. That means you're not stopping it forever. You are just pausing it to play it again very soon. The pause button is almost like stop, but you want to play it again in a short period of time. The pause button. The pause button. She pressed the pause button when her husband asked her a question in the other room. You know, maybe she's jamming out to music. And then in, in the next room, in the other room, you hear somebody saying something. Wait, what? Push pause. What did you say? Did you hear how I said that? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? I said, turn that music down. Oh, I want to blast my music. So you can push the pause button again to start it playing. Pause. The stop button is usually a square, right? That's what we call it in English, the stop button, that little square. That means the music is over. And guess what? That means... The lesson is over today. We could do more music vocabulary in English, and we might in a few weeks, next month, next year. I don't know. But I do want to thank you all for joining us, joining me. Kate, hi. Freddie Wolf, see you later. David Bowie, come on. Pretty amazing. Cecilia, thank you so much. Manuel, Stacy, Natalia, Apple the Frog. It was so nice to see you this week. Next week. Hey, let me know in the comments as we leave here. What do you want me to do for next week? I have a lesson on family I am putting together, but I might take somebody else's suggestion. Let me know in the comments as we leave. Thank you all, Erroni. I think Maria was here, Yawin. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned a little English. Adios, amigos.